SpaceX is busy formulating a new plan for future Starship launches after the first attempt went up in flames. The doomed test flight resulted in an environmental lawsuit against the FAA. In today's video, let's talk about how SpaceX plans to get through these hurdles. Will the Starship launch again this year? The Starship is a spacecraft that's been designed to carry both cargo and people to the moon, Mars, and beyond. The spacecraft is made up of two main components, the Super Heavy Rocket Booster and the Starship spacecraft. The Super Heavy Rocket Booster is responsible for providing the initial thrust to escape Earth's gravity, and then the Starship takes over to carry out the rest of the mission. The ship is designed to be fully reusable, which means that it can be used multiple times, reducing the cost of space travel significantly. This makes it possible for us to explore the final frontier like never before. The rocket is made of stainless steel, a material Musk is particularly fond of due to its relatively low price. Unlike NASA's Mega Moon rocket, which flies on super-chilled liquid hydrogen and oxygen, this beast is fueled with 10 million pounds of liquid methane and oxygen. The new fuel can be stored at more manageable temperatures than liquid hydrogen, meaning it doesn't need as much insulation and is less prone to leaks, a problem that often stymies NASA launches. Starship is intended to eventually evolve into a fully reusable launch and landing system designed for trips to the Moon, Mars, and other destinations. After repeated warnings, a coalition of environmental groups is suing the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, claiming the agency didn't fully analyze the environmental damage that SpaceX's Starship vehicle could cause to sensitive lands. The FAA cleared SpaceX to conduct 20 launches of Starship each year for the next five years, notes the lawsuit, which was filed on May 1st in Federal District Court in Washington, D.C. The first of those permitted launches occurred on April 20th from Starbase, SpaceX's site on South Texas's Gulf Coast near Boca Chica Beach. The 394-foot-tall Starship, the biggest and most powerful rocket ever built, performed well on the test flight initially and managed to reach a maximum altitude of 24 miles. But the giant spacecraft suffered several issues that forced SpaceX to command the vehicle's destruction high over the Gulf of Mexico. The explosive test mission sent particulate matter raining down on the surrounding area, notes the lawsuit which was filed by the Center for Biological Diversity, the American Bird Conservancy, the Surfrider Foundation, Save RGV, and the Carrizo Concrudo Nation of Texas. The organization went on to stress the environmental importance of the area and the effect of SpaceX's presence is having on the surroundings. SpaceX's Boca Chica launch site is surrounded by state parks, national wildlife refuge lands, and important habitat for imperiled wildlife, including piping plovers, northern apiomado falcons, Gulf Coast jaguarundi, ocelots, and critically endangered sea turtles, the Center for Biological Diversity wrote in a statement. Rocket launches and explosions cause significant harm through increased vehicle traffic in the intense heat, noise, and light pollution from construction and launch activities, the Arizona-based nonprofit added. Rocket explosions spread debris across the surrounding habitat and have caused brush fires. SpaceX's work at Starbase also affects people in the area, according to the lawsuit. For example, Boca Chica Beach is public, but the FAA permit allows SpaceX to close access to it for up to 800 hours per year. Such closures are a hardship for the native Carrizo Comicrudo people, affecting their ability to hold ceremonies in the area, the lawsuit states. The Carrizo Comicrudo people's sacred lands are once again being threatened by imperialist policies that treat our cultural heritage as less valuable than corporate interest, Juan Mancias, tribal chair of the Carrizo Comicrudo Nation of Texas, Inc., said in the same statement. Boca Chica is central to our creation story, Mancias added, but we have been cut off from the land our ancestors lived on for thousands of years due to SpaceX, which is using our ancestral lands as a sacrifice zone for its rockets. The lawsuit calls on the FAA to conduct a full environmental review of SpaceX's Starship activities in South Texas. SpaceX has also received significant backlash from residents in the area as dust and debris from the launch were sent flying, sometimes for miles, creating concerns for some locals. According to a City of Port Isabel Facebook post, it has been confirmed that the spray of Starship detritus that covered locals' cars and homes posed no health risk and was in fact sand and dust lofted airborne and thrown miles in every direction by the rocket's liftoff. Closer to ground zero, the 33 engines of the rocket's main booster left a literal crater in the concrete at Starship's launch pad. Debris large enough to crush a car was sent flying in every direction, and while the tower was left standing, the launch complex is in need of some major cleanup efforts. 
Images from RGV Aerial Photography and Spaceflight Now show construction materials and pieces of old Starship builds strewn across the surrounding area, and a Twitter video shows a NASA spaceflight van getting mangled by the flying rubble. SpaceX has responded to the lawsuit by significantly upgrading the launch facilities at their test site. These new upgrades will not only reduce the environmental impact of the test, but also neutralize the threat of debris in the future. Elon Musk stated that SpaceX started building a massive water-cooled steel plate to go under the launch mount, but that it would not have been ready before the launch on April 20th. He suggested it would be ready for installation before the next launch attempt in one to two months. The billionaire CEO had said in 2020 that there would be no need to use such a flame diverter to steer the flames on the ground, but acknowledged that that could be the wrong decision. Other launch sites in the United States, such as SpaceX's own pads at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, use flame diverters, which are large, cavernous hallways leading away from a rocket's underside to steer its tail up, fiery forces at a controlled path, aimed at minimizing damage. Without such a plan, debris kicked up during liftoff could strike the rocket itself and compromise the mission and public safety. Tom Murata, an advisor of launch regulations to space companies, said that before any next Starship launch attempt, the Federal Aviation Administration would need to approve the changes to the launch pad infrastructure to prevent another potentially hazardous scenario. Elon Musk claims that the destruction caused at the launch pad in the previous attempt was a calculated decision that backfired. He stated that after reviewing data from previous static fire tests, engineers at SpaceX assumed that the pad would hold up to 5 million pounds of thrust generated by the Starship. However, some problems cannot be anticipated by math alone. SpaceX is fairly confident that the next test flight will be much cleaner as it will feature Booster 9, which is a marginal upgrade over the Booster 7 used in the first test. For starters, Booster 9 features an engine isolation system which will provide far greater control for the ground crew in the event of failure after launch. One of the most notable changes from previous prototypes is the removal of the hydraulic power units on the side of the aft section that was used to power the thrust vector control gimbaling system. The engines on Booster 9 are the first to use electric TVC instead of hydraulic ones on Booster 7. Some hardware also has been added to the thrust dome to improve structural stability. The large liquid methane pipes for the gimbaling Raptor engines are now pre-mounted on the thrust puck, which will simplify the pre-assembly needed on the engines and may speed up installation for future launches. SpaceX had launched a handful of test flights from Starbase before this, but those previous efforts were a different breed. They got nowhere near space, involved only upper stage spacecraft, and featured a maximum of three Raptor engines. And it had been a while since we'd seen one of these flights. A Starship prototype last launched in May 2021, sticking its landing after soaring about six miles into the South Texas sky. Ever since that three-engine success, SpaceX has been gearing up for the next big step in the Starship test program, the first space launch which would feature an integrated Starship Super Heavy stack for the first time. And that's what we saw on the 20th. The relatively long lead-up to this test flight wasn't attributable merely to the challenges of technological development. There were regulatory hurdles too. For example, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration reviewed SpaceX's application for a Starship near-orbital launch license for more than 500 days before finally granting it on Friday, April 14th. As part of this process, the FAA conducted an in-depth environmental review of activities at Starbase, instructing SpaceX to perform more than 75 mitigating actions to minimize the impact on the surrounding ecosystem, which is incredibly biodiverse. We should expect SpaceX to fly Starship again relatively soon. The company has multiple Starship vehicles in production at Starbase, and the plan is to fly them pretty much as soon as they're ready. That's in keeping with Musk's philosophy, which prioritizes the advances gained from flight tests, even those that fail. If the test campaign goes well, people could climb aboard Starship for the first time just a few short years from now. NASA selected Starship to be the first crewed lander for its Artemis Moon program, for example. The SpaceX vehicle will put astronauts down near the lunar south pole on the Artemis 3 mission, which is targeted to launch in 2025 or thereabouts. SpaceX has already sold two private around-the-moon Starship missions as well. One was booked by Japanese billionaire Yusaku Meizawa, who will fly with a crew of eight artists and influencers. 
Dinastito, who paid his own way to the International Space Station back in 2001, will fly on the other Starship Moon mission along with his wife Akiko and other passengers whose identities have not yet been disclosed. Target launch dates for those two private moon missions have not yet been announced, but they and all of Starship's other envisioned future flights are a little closer to reality now that the huge vehicle has actually gotten off the ground. The Starship has the ability to carry up to 100 passengers to the Moon, Mars, and beyond, giving people the opportunity to experience space travel in a whole new way. With its comfortable cabin and advanced life support systems, the Starship is the perfect vehicle for space tourism. And with its powerful engines and efficient fuel system, it can carry out long-duration missions with minimal interruption. Space tourism is a relatively new concept and has only become possible in recent years due to advancements in technology. In the past, only astronauts and professional space travelers had the opportunity to experience the thrill of space travel. But now, with companies like SpaceX offering private missions to space, the dream of space travel is becoming a reality for more and more people. Space tourism offers many benefits both for the individual traveler and for society as a whole. For the individual, it offers the chance to experience a once-in-a-lifetime adventure and the opportunity to see our planet from a completely new perspective. For society, it provides a new source of revenue and jobs and helps to advance the field of space exploration. While being able to travel to space is an interesting prospect, it's not without its challenges. For one, it's an extremely expensive endeavor, with private missions costing millions of dollars. In addition, there are still many technical and safety concerns that need to be addressed, such as the effects of long-term exposure to zero gravity on the human body. If you like this video, you may also like this one, which talks about why the Starship blew up after launch. Do you think the FAA can settle the environmental lawsuit? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.